Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to episode 19 of study guide today we will be covering war of independence onwards the section 1 of history 2058 syllabus so let us begin let me quickly clear the canvas okay so the war of independence again this can be a 7 mark question this can be a, a 14 mark question it depends on what kind of question they will give you. For a 7 mark question, they can ask you give reasons for the war. For a 14 mark question, they can ask you this reason was more contributing than that reason. This reason paved the way for the war or that reason paid for the uh, pay, paved the way for the war. Agree or disagree. Give your opinion, give your view, etc. So we are going to cover the War of Independence in a way that we are able to cover all sorts of questions. So starting with the reasons for the war, the first one was Christian missionaries. Uh, the This reason, Christian missionaries one, this is what you can call uh, a breaking point. The very second day, this certain thing started happening, the Indians were triggered. May it be the Muslims or the Hindus, they were triggered because the Christian missionaries were starting to convert local people to Christianity. And religion uh, plays, a very plays a very important role. Therefore, this was very important. Then again, another religious reason was the banning of Sati, which was female infanticide, or um, which was a banning, a banning of Sati, which was the burning of a widow with her husband's death. This was, an, uh, this was a Hindu custom. So it was it basically triggered the Hindus a lot. Okay. But then we had the remarriage act. Again, it was a Hindu tradition that a woman cannot remarry after her husband's death or after divorce. Then the abandonment of Parda. This was a Muslim tradition. The man the abandonment of Parda was a Muslim tradition. And so we've done four reasons by far. Let's talk about how we can write these reasons. Now, when you're going to talk about the uh, Christian missionaries, you're going to link it to religion in the analysis. And how that triggered the Hindus and Muslims, apologies, triggered the Hindus and Muslims alike. Triggered everyone, or Indians even. Triggered, triggered the Hindus and Muslims alike because it was on the religious basis that they, they thought that they, their they thought that their traditions and their lineage was trying to be uh, removed. It was trying to be eradicated. So you can use these words to further justify your answer. Uh, regarding Sati Remarriage Act, you can uh, write these two points. These two points. In one uh, point as well, you can basically just write that the Hindus were triggered. You can link that one point in a seven mark question. You can write that one point as uh, Hindus were triggered. And then you can link these two points. When we come to abandonment of Parda. This one. The abandonment of Parda. You can link it to Muslims. Similarly, apart from abandonment of Parda, you can also um, talk about the new education system in which co-education was enforced. Uh, among Muslims, this was extremely problematic. They did not want that at all. So again, you can write three points in a seven mark question. One of them can be about Christian missionaries. One of them can be about the Hindus being triggered. And one of them can be about the Muslims being triggered. A seven mark question will be done. Now, I know the main question over here would be, but all of them, wouldn't all of them have the same analysis, which would be religion? But no, it won't. So basically, over here, when you're going to talk about Christian missionaries, your analysis will be that this was the trigger point. This was the final um, tip-off for the Muslims and Hindus to actually spark the war. With the banning of Sati, it enraged the Hindus first, but since it was not a tradition among the Muslims, it was not entirely considered wrong. So, uh, it was it was a trigger for Hindus, and they became uh, sour towards the British. But how, however, when you come to banishment of Parda and the co-education enforcement, you can talk about how it was a trigger for Muslims, and then they become sour towards the British. 
then you can talk about the replacement of uh, Persian and Sanskrit language again. Over here, you can your analysis will be about culture. They thought that their culture was trying to be eradicated. The doctrine of lapse. The doctrine of lapse is the illegal uh, takeover of lands by the British, and uh, they made a very stupid. Uh, doctrine it said that if a leader died and he did not have a proper heir a proper heir would be a son or someone eligible and not even someone eligible if the son is not eligible they would take over the land so this was considered wrong and unfair so therefore the doctrine of lapse is also a trigger point you can uh, even give example of the nawab of oath over here how he had a son but the British still take took over the land by blaming him and calling him all, uh, unfit for the place of the Nawab. The mistreatment of Mughal emper emperors and the introduction of Greece card. Now, yes, introduction of Greece cartridges. Another uh, religious point of view, on a religious point of view, another thing. But the in the Greece cartridges, the cartridges of Greece with. Cartridges were greased with pig fat. And now in Islam, in Muslims, this uh, pig fat was considered to be um, unholy. And you know, just unko uh, Muslim ke liye toh, it's like a chhoot basically, untouchable. Whereas in Hindus, they considered pig to be a very auspicious animal. So they thought that it was not right. Therefore, it became a problem. So these are all the reasons that contributed to the war of independence. Now the, the amount of reasons written over here can easily help you write uh, a 14 mark question as well. So you can easily uh, battle on which point was more successful and which was not. Moving on, what caused this war to fail? Lack of unity. Very important reason very important reason was the lack of unity why because the muslims and hindus were divided may they be divided by religion may they be divided by their motives everything they were divided they had different aims so you can even uh, Intersect these two points or you can write this as a separate point. Then many Indian leaders did not want to restore the Indian culture, the Indian uh, rule. Why was this? You can write that because they had gotten so much advancement during the British rule. They did not want to go back to the old ways. Alright. Then imperial powers. The imperial powers that uh, the rulers had the muslims or the indian rulers had they were basically just feudal powers uh, as in they only fought amongst each other and they only they had no real power in the actual court and then they had no proper army obviously they were just basic uh, men that were enraged and wanted to fight they had no leader how could they have a leader when they didn't even have a partnership who would you make a leader a muslim or a hindu a sikh or who Six and uh, the other minorities don't even count over here because at that time the only two people fighting were the Muslims and Hindus. So who would you choose as a proper leader? No one. And then the British had more modern methods. They were more skilled. They were more tactful compared to the Indians. You can give examples over here of how they uh, um, they still had transmission lines, transmission wires. When even though they the many ways of communication were cut off, they still had. So, again, these reasons, the number of reasons over here are also more than enough for uh, a 14 mark question. Alright, now moving on. Again, now we have an example, exemplary question. The war, wait, before we move on to this. Okay, wait, let's do this instead. The war of... No, actually, sorry. Let's do this first. The effects of the 1857 war. Now, the effects... By effects, we mean the after effects. What did the war achieve? What did the war... What happened after that? What were the British's um, take on it? What were the Hindus' take on it? What were the Muslims' take on it? What, was the, what were the Indians' take on it as a whole? The first thing that the Britishers did was that they abolished the EIC. 
Why was it abolished and ended? Because they thought that EIC was no longer playing a valid role and it was useless. Then a new and effective governing system was introduced. A system that they thought would uh, make the would put the Indians to ease. But that did not happen either. Then the proclamation of 1858 was issued. Now you can mention whatever the proclamation stated and how it would be beneficial or how it would be not. Now there are several points in the proclamation that you can use and you can even jot it down as two different or two to three different paragraphs. The doctrine of lapse was abolished. So this was a plus point, a success. The crown rule was attained. This was not a plus point. This was a negative. The British became more cautious. This was an okay point. Equal, equal. The Indians decreased in army. This was again a negative point. The Muslims are blamed and badly tortured. This was negative for the Muslims. Because why were they blamed and they were uh, badly tortured? Because the Indians, the Hindus took over these lands that we were not involved. It was the Muslims who did it. So that's why they were blamed. Again, this is these points are more than enough for a 14 mark question as well as well as a 7 mark question. Talking about the effect on Muslims, they were blamed for the whole revolt by British who as a result targeted them in each walk of life. Now, why was this? Because the Hindus actually uh, blamed everything on Muslims. And the British assumed that uh, Muslims were the ones after this because it was the Mughal rule that was destroyed. So they thought that the Muslims were trying to regain their prestige, regain their rule, therefore. And therefore, all their adversities, all their adversities were directly affected on Muslims. For the Hindus, however, it turned out to be a golden opportunity. They um, gained the favor of the British and they got more places in the... They managed to secure more places. Wait, let me just draw a neat arrow over here. Hmm. And as for the British, they became more cautious, but more importantly, crown rules was established and they finally had a, a what do you call it a monarchy in india okay moving back i'm gonna go back to the part where we were doing the question yes the 14 mark question why war of independence achieved nothing agree do you agree or disagree now you're going to talk about it in level based again for those of you who do not know what level marking is, please check out the uh, one of our earlier videos. We have done this in detail. So for level three, I'm going to cover the topics which I know less about. Now, when they talk about war of independence achieved nothing, this means there will be two sides. One side will cover how nothing was achieved. No, no. How the war failed. And one side will cover how the war succeeded and then on that basis you will further l3 and l4 you will further work on your level 3 and level 4 now it depends do you know more in the paper do you know more about the successes or more about the failures if you know more about the successes you will write more points of the successions and if you know more about the failures, you will write more points than the failures. Now, in my opinion, since the war eventually failed, I wrote more points on the failure. Even though I went for a 3 to 4 ratio, which is one of the best ratios, one of the best ratios to work with. I went for a 3 is to 4 ratio. The most successful ratio out there is this one. This one. So it's better that you go for this one. Since it gives the uh, the impression that you know equal or almost uh, the same of both these sides. So talking about the achievements or the successes. I wrote three successes. The BIC was abolished. It is an amazing success since it was mooching off the locals. The doctrine of lapse was abolished. Again, a success because it was one of the aims of the uh, people who started the war. 
and then the rifle cartridges were ended again a very massive su- success since now the uh, people could easily participate in the war and again this is one of the aims so in both in these both of these points this one and this one they talk about aims the aims of the war and since these aims are att- attained we say that this was a success and as for this one the bic being abolished this is also an aim but this was not an intentional aim of the war however it was success it, it was uh um they the bi bic was mooching off of the locals so now this that won't happen anymore then the bad consequences however was were that the british became the master of india what does that mean crown rule was established crown rule establishment means that now the british had a direct monarchy over india then the indian members were decreased in army the indian members were decreased in army this was again a bad consequence since sold since indian representation would lessen the muslims were treated harshly and blamed in this analysis you will write that this was bad for bad for muslims and then harsher pol- harsher policies harsher policies were now adopted by the british in terms of the indian you can also write other bad consequences stuff like uh, um the british becoming more cautious the cautious again goes back to the same point that the harsher policies were established so it doesn't really make a difference but you can write other points as well if you have any these are the most uh, detailed points that you can give remember in the paper what matters is what you know more if you know more about one side you can write more about that side but you also have to remember that if a war failed then your evaluation should be somehow similar now coming to the evaluation of this question i will write it over here okay coming to the evaluation okay let me do this evaluation now uh, for the evaluation purposes what will your evaluation be in my opinion i personally believe the war of independence achieved one thing now it it did achieve one thing so it is in my opinion it was not entirely a failure not entirely a failure so first i gave out my stance and what is my stance my stance is that it did not entirely fail then i will back up my stance so reason for my stance i will then give and then i will analyze it or justify it whatever you would like to call it i will analyze and justify both of these so my my stance would be that it was not like the war did not achieve anything in my opinion the war was not uh, entirely a failure it did achieve a lot one of the biggest achievements was the fact that the muslims realized that the indians were not going to be their supporters and that they would be blamed so they have to also take up a favorable stance with the british so it can be it can be an eye opening reality for the muslims we i can also link it like that so you see your evaluation should be distinctive it should be different from what you have written before it should be distinctive from what what you will written, write afterwards when the examiner reads your evaluation they should be like wow this person really took some time on it you can also write that it, it, it did achieve something since the uh, uh muslims became more and more clear about their stance towards the entire situation and uh, especially towards hindus and this later paved the way for the two nation theory and the creation of pakistan so you simply have to just link and link and link it why my reason is right why my stance is this why my reason supports that stance and then why my reason reason is justified so you have to give all of that information in your answer in your 14 mark evaluation that is the only thing that will get you that one mark literally you are going to do all this for just one mark then coming to another question why were the muslims blamed it's a seven mark question and it says why were the muslims blamed the muslims are blamed because initially the moguls were the emperors so the british assumed that they wanted to uh reinstate that power then the hindus were accepting british policies but the muslims were not 
this was another reason why the Muslims are blamed because the Hindus Im- immediately they changed their stance. They said, okay, we will accept your policies. But the Muslims are not since most of their policies, the policies that the Muslims wanted to be changed were not being changed. So they did not accept those policies. The British assumed that the Muslims really don't want to do anything with them. And then Bahadur Shah Zafar uh, was the only unifying force between the Muslims and the Mughals. But uh, he was mistreated by the British. So after his mistreatment, Bahadur Shah Zafar was also gone. Bahadur Shah Zafar was also gone. But not only that, the unifying force... The one thing that was keeping the Muslims together and their aims together and they uh, they representing them as a whole was also gone. So eventually the Muslims had no one. They were very scattered. They had no opinion. So they had a bad, uh, what do you call it, impression as a whole. And then the seven mark question. Why was the EIC abolished? EIC was far too long in India. British felt self-threatened. Obviously, um, since EIC was just a trading company, it had been in India for too long. So the British felt threatened. They were th- they were thinking that maybe the EIC was uh, establishing something more than just a trading company in India. So they didn't they wanted to eradicate that threat. Then the British did not need EIC. Now that they had established themselves in India so well, they thought that they don't need, do not need the excuse of a trading company anymore. Then the greed of power of India. The Britishers now wanted to keep India. They wanted their jewel in the crown. So they went on and they abolished the IC and took the power on by themselves. So guys, this was the episode 19. of study guide i will see you guys in the next mm, video it is that best of luck however if you guys have any specific query that you want me to uh entertain or cover then please let me know in the comments below you can email me or even message me on the number that is given on our uh, mm, on an ad for the Park Studies Islamiyat in History, uh, Park Studies in Islamiyat tuition. And if you guys want to, to be a part of that tuition, please let us know before the uh, 10th of November so that we can start with your classes. Uh, we can start with your schedule and your payment. Apart from that, this is all for episode 19 of Study Guide. I'm sorry if this was rushed. We will work on making more of these videos better. Let me know if you want anything else apart from that. Best of luck. Allah Hafiz.